everybody at the SHE conference, Mary Ann here, and I just want to take a moment to tell all of you just how much it meant to me to find out that you were giving me the Lifetime Achievement Award in the area of human rights. It means a great deal to me right now, more than ever before, because right now here in the United States, especially in the state of Texas, it is a very difficult time for Latino and Hispanic women. And that is largely because of what's happening in my country. At this point in time, there are children who are kept in cages along the border in McAllen. At this time, unfortunately, we have leadership that is calling people who are from Mexico an infestation. At this time, we have people that because of that leadership, feel empowered to make certain assumptions. The idea that we are often called thieves and rapists and all sorts of other generic things is a scary thing. And when I think about where you are, the country where Anne Frank lived and tried to fight, we end up looking at a part of history where things were pretty dark. And they got dark because people did not stand up or not enough stood up. And that's why right now it's more important than ever for those of us who have an education, who have a podium on which to stand, influence, who have a position that allows us to reach many people across this world. It is important now more than ever, not just for ourselves as Latina and Hispanic and Native American women, but for anyone else that shares our same complexion and hair color and has this kind of look. Because if we're not standing up, then who will? And I want to speak to each of you as well today, because it's not enough that we march in the lines and we raise our voices. It's important that we look at how we do business. How do we mark with our money, our investments and our leadership? How do we hold ourselves accountable? Are we part of the solution or are we part of the problem? How we spend our money is as important as how we make our money. How we make our money is as important as raising our voice. We can speak both with the dollar and we can speak with just our actions and walking around and how we interact with each other. But more than any of that, one of the main things I want to ask all of you to do today, regardless of what part of the world you're in, is to try and spread the word that one of us is, has our human rights um, in any way threatened. Then we need to stand up because that threatens the human rights of us all. And we need to extend that to people that do not look like us, that do not think like us, that act in different ways and have different beliefs, different skin colors, complexions, sexual orientations, different cultures. If we cannot stand up for the person who is absolutely different than us and thinks absolutely differently, then we are not doing the job of standing up for human rights because a threat against one demographic is a threat against us all. I would love to talk to you all more about this, but for those of you that are in Amsterdam, I want to encourage you to breathe in that history and think about how it reflects on our own lives and think about how the way we end up taking a stand and our voice of strength begins with ourselves. A long time ago, when I was a teenager here in Dallas, I was very blessed to get to go to a school called the Hockaday School for Young Women. And it was a, probably still is, one of the toughest female schools for high school and younger students in, in the country. And, you know, I wasn't thinking anything about it, but I was invited to go to a country club that my uh, parents were uh, members of. And I'm in the locker room. I've just been um, doing a lot of athletic stuff. And so I've just taken a shower, I'm changing. And I get a tap on my shoulder and I turned around and there's this woman and she came up to me and she said, I wanna thank you. And I said, why? And she was someone who worked there. She was obviously in, um, responsible for cleaning the place. And she said, I want to thank you because your graduating from that school proves to me that there is nothing in my DNA, nothing in my genetics or my culture that could keep me from having that same potential myself. And that shocked me because what it was telling me is that into her mind that for some reason, a woman who was obviously intelligent enough to know what DNA was and genetics were, you know, that it had made her wonder if knowing that she has shared my brown skin and my complexion, that that hold her back from achieving her dreams, that hold her back from being able to pursue a high education or a challenging, rigorous education. That had never thought, thought of, it just hadn't occurred to me. And I started looking back and wondering why does that thought affect some of us? And conversely, sometimes here in the United States, I'll have people that come up to me and says, why, why are you speaking white? And I have to remind them to be educated, to have ambition, to have the desire and passion to build what you want in the world. That's not thinking white. 
that is having ambition and the ability and intelligence to build what you want in the world. These are things that hurt us from the inside. And so when we talk about what's happening in the world, we have to look at two different things. On one hand, we have to take a look at how is the exterior when we deal with areas of white supremacy, when we deal with um, legislation that could hurt us, and we deal with very real human rights issues, such as the children that are being held in McAllen on the border in cages. Yes, I've seen them. That's very real, and we need to raise our voices about that. On the other hand, we also have to deal with what's coming inside our demographic. Why do some people not believe that they are as intelligent, as worthy, and have as much right and passion to achieve their dreams and others? And we need to talk about that. We need to talk about the coconut, Oreo, apple thing that, we, <laughs> that people talk about. The idea that you're white on the inside when you have ambition and intelligence and you pursue an education. We need to remind people that it's not that. That that is taking other people's racism into your own core belief system. And that poisons you in a way that no amount of exterior attacks can. In fact, sometimes it poisons people in a way so deeply they don't want to get out there and vote. They don't want to get out there because they don't think their voices matter. And the irony is that's exactly what people want them to do, is to not vote, to not act on their dreams. Because if you don't do that, you don't get where you want to be in the world. And if you can't get to where you want to be in the world, you can't do your part in helping to shape where you want our collective future to be as humanity. So, you know, this message obviously is for those of you that are Latina, Hispanic, Native American, all those of you that recognize and identify with being a Latina Hispanic woman in the world. And most of us that are from the Americas, that means we have anywhere from 100% to about 70% of Native American blood in us. And that's another thing I want to talk to you about. When I have traveled throughout the Americas and, you know, a lot of, a lot of it being in Mexico, of course, a lot of it in my own country, the United States of America, but more recently in Peru and more recently in Bolivia. And when I've met people from the Latina American area, it's come to my attention that many people think of Indio as a bad thing. And I want to remind those of you that the fact that we have Azteca, Zapoteca, Inca, Maya, whatever you resonate with <laughs> um, inside of you, the fact that we have that, we have in ourselves the DNA heritage of people that were building pyramids, the people that were doing architectural feats that defy the imagination, people that understood astronomy, people that understood complex mathematics, people that had the theology that still rivals some of the most complex theolog theologic ideas in the world. Things that take into effect science and spirituality and academics of mathematics and astronomy and mesh them together in ways that still inform many of the countries throughout the Americas. If we remember that we have that in us, then that is not something to be ashamed of. That's something to be proud of. Those of us that are part of this SHE conference, whether like me, you've just been, um, you've been recognized and are receiving an award, or those of you that are doing the hard work of being there in Amsterdam, networking and doing this with your lives, whoever you are, or those of you that are just watching this on Facebook or YouTube, please remember that if you believe any part of yourself is less than, you are giving in to an ancient narrative that has nothing to do with reality. Let me repeat that again. If you believe any part of you is less than worthy or has less potential by virtue of your culture or DNA, then you are buying in to a bigoted racist narrative that has nothing to do with reality. But if you buy into it, you allow it to inform and shape your own reality. And that does nothing but limit what you can achieve. So what I really want to make sure that I bring home to all of you today is raise your voice. Do not be silent. Whatever country you're in, vote and participate. Whatever ambition or, or you have, remember you have the intelligence to do that, to, to be able to go after your dreams. You will fail. That's normal. And you will brush yourself and get up again and you will keep on going. 
Remember, you are descended from people who built pyramids. You are descended from people that achieve miraculous things. And remember that heritage is just as important in every way, just as valid and contributing to the remarkable feats that people have done over centuries, as is where the language that, you know, from Spain came from, Spanish. So yes, be proud to be a Latina woman, a Hispanic woman, but do not forget that the part of us that is Native American, that is Indio, is in every single way something to take pride in and should be seen as a source of strength. You have in you the strength of a warrior's voice. Live up to it. The very fact that every single one of you exists in today's world means you are descended from fighters. You're descended from visionaries. You're descended from people that refuse to give up. That is something that every single one of us has within our DNA, has within every part of our being. And who are we to do less than to thrive and strive to make a mark upon this world that is worthy of the pyramid makers of the ancient past? So as we move forward, whatever you're working in, whether you're a for-profit or a non-profit, whether you're in politics, whether you're an activist, whatever it is, Raise your voice. Do not hold your head down, hold your head high, and know that as you walk in this world, you are meant to achieve great things. And not only that, while we're fighting here in Texas, and we're fighting about the SB4, where people like myself have to have extra papers to prove that we are American citizens, because if you look like the way we look, they want to double proof that you really are legal. You know, while we're fighting those things, we're fighting the children, you know, the fact that children are in cages, or we're fighting the outrageous atrocities of children being torn away by their parents and being legally adopted without their parents' consent in the United States of America. And while these fights are very real, and while the fights that are very real that are happening today to Azteca, Inca, Maya, Zapoteca, while that's happening to these people on the border that are coming here because of what they're seeking to escape, and they're seeking freedom and they're trying to get out of the dire straits of what they're dealing in Honduras, Venezuela, and other places. While we're fighting those fights, we have to also remember that it's no different than the fights that used to happen in the past when they used to put Choctaw and Cherokee and Caddo and Apache and tear them away from their families. Recently, I was emceeing a, you know, the first Aspen Native American film festival. And we got to see the ramifications of what happens to children when that occurs to them. And we got, I got to meet uh, baby boomers who were children that had been torn from their families and heard firsthand from them, as well as watched one of the films, Whitewashed, I suggest to any of you. And I got to see what it meant to them and how it had hurt their lives for generations just to be torn away from their families that way. So... You know, while we're fighting all these fights, remember that that is the extreme version of it. And remember that if you're in Amsterdam and you're able to get there and you're able to be among those recognized, able to be among those who are getting to speak and address the others, or you're just one of the amazing women that are there to be part of this exciting SHE conference, please remember you are one of the few that are empowered to speak out. And if you are one of the people empowered to speak out, speak out for that child in the cage. Speak out for that mother or father or uncle or great or brela, breleta that have been sent outside of the country. You have no idea what's happened to the small child that they love. The two-year-old that had to go and you know, address a courtroom fighting for their human rights when all she understood was that her parents were gone. She didn't know what was going to happen and she has no access to an attorney and is yet being tried as an adult. You know, it means a lot to receive this recognition for human rights, but there are a lot of people who are fighting even harder than I am. What I have is the opportunity to be seen in a podium and so do you. What all of us have Therefore, it's a responsibility to speak for those who cannot. And while the SHE conference is all about trying to galvanize and, and, and empower and inspire Latina women and Hispanic women, I want to ask you to remember all the other people. Right now, you're in Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a place that's known for Anne Frank lived her last days. 
a lot of people don't realize she applied to be able to come to the United States to escape what was happening in Germany. And it's been said many, many times by the Anne Frank Foundation and the Anne Frank Institute that if the things that are being applied right now in the United States had been applied back then, that it would be even harder. There'd be even fewer descendants from Holocaust survivors that would survive to this day. Sadly, she was turned away by the same kinds of rhetoric that we're hearing right now in my country. And sadly, we hear these things across the world. Well, also remember where that began. It didn't begin with Jews. It began with LGBT. It began with the Roma. It began with other people. And every single demographic said, oh, well, that doesn't have anything to do with me. It's not affecting me. I'm not going to worry about that. And that's when we get to the work of Pastor Niemöller. And he talked about, first it came through this group, and I said nothing because I was not one of them. Then they came for the next group, and I said nothing because I was not one of them. And now they're coming up the stairs for me, and there's no one left to speak for me. That is how important it is. So as I joke with people, if you have to have a sociopathic reason to stand up for the other, then realize that an infringement upon the human rights of one person is an infringement upon the human rights of us all. I hope that while you're there in Amsterdam, you'll take this in as you walk the streets, as you see the beautiful canals, and understand what it meant when people did not speak up and where it ended where people did not speak up. And I hope that you will take that lesson with you as you leave Amsterdam and go to whatever part of the world you reside in and speak out for the child in a cage, for the abuelita who doesn't know where her grandson is or the person who has to bring out extra papers to prove they are a citizen. I hope you speak up for the person who looks just like us in skin color and, you know, and hair color, who says that you're being a coconut because you are intelligent and ambitious and educated. I hope you speak to their soul and say, no, I just believe that I am worthy and have potential and in every way equal to anyone else on this planet. And that means I believe you are too. That is, if I can leave one thing with all of you, those things are the things I hope you leave watching this video with. And if I do nothing else in this world, I hope that is the thing that I leave people with a sense of when I am gone. So thank you, SHE Conference, for recognizing my work in human rights. But please know that the greatest gift I could ever receive is not your recognition, it's your recognition of yourselves and the potential you each have to make this kind of difference in the world. Which is gracias para tu espíritu, Dios le bendiga. Amen to all.